Hi there, this is Dr. Rajat Sinha here welcoming you to this video and the title of this video is Always Trust a Stranger, Always Trust a Stranger. So if you're looking at expanding your financial footprint in the market, if you're looking to get better returns from your job, your profession or whatever you're doing as a career and if you want to cut through the noise and all the torture and get good results in life career wise, then almost always almost always you will have to act on information that may not be currently known to you that may not be currently known to you because the results in your life are the results of the information you have the results in your life are the results of the information you have which could be academic information where you studied you know what degree you got etc it could be familial information which basically means what is your family background how were you brought up what are the belief systems that you have around industry career money etc and also current information current information that you're immersed in so what kind of media do you watch do you watch a lot of tv do you what kind of news channels do you watch what kind of people you follow on youtube what kind of books you read so your results in life are a, are a direct result of the information you have if you want to improve your results in life then chances are that you need new information and this new information will almost always come from a stranger will almost always come from a stranger now as a culture you know we have been taught and I'm, I'm sure this is about this this is true of almost every culture around the world which country which community etc you come from that hey you know don't trust a whole lot of strangers and you know make sure that you acid test all of the information uh, you know that you receive before acting on it and I totally agree with that however in the financial domain things may be slightly different in the financial domain things may be slightly different see there is there are two kinds of security there is imminent security and then there is long-term security what is imminent security do not drink and drive you'll get into trouble that's great information if anyone tells you different especially a stranger you know probably don't believe in that because your imminent security will be threatened okay look to the left and the right before you cross the road great advice you know given to us from the academic side from the school as well as taught to us in school uh, taught to us by our parents and if anyone were to tell us different it would probably be very dangerous that is great information do not trust any stranger that tells you any different great information good for your imminent security however financial security is a game not only of long-term rules that only the insiders know and understand but also of dynamics in the market that may not be directly apparent to us to make things worse, worse, financial well-being is a direct result of demand and supply and risk and reward. Okay, so let me just write this stuff down. Okay, you've got demand and supply and you've got risk and reward. Okay, which basically means what? If you're doing something that everybody else is doing, which is a direct correlation of how you're brought up, where you went to school, etc. You probably all your friends are doing the same similar education probably whatever you're doing in life has been approved by your parents and teachers and elders etc chances are it is an oversupplied segment chances are it's an oversupplied segment why because there's so many of you doing it and when any segment gets oversupplied you know or outgrows the demand then the financial returns plummet the financial returns plummet the second is risk and reward all of the biggest returns in life comes from taking risks in newer evolutionary areas doing the same thing over and over again especially in an area that is oversupplied never really helped anybody of course it can buy you a car it can buy you a house it can give you a good retirement but if you want to achieve something over and above that if you want to do something great if you want to get better results than the large masses of market averages are getting if you want to have better be better do better contribute better the chances are that at some point in time you'll have to take some risk now like i said there is imminent security and there is long-term security for your imminent security which is physical security eat right don't cross, cross the road without looking don't drink and drive you know these are good good uh, in this is good piece of information for us to follow but not taking risks always going safe accumulating money over long periods of time to build your corpus some of this advice is now being proven to be wrong advice some of this advice has been proven to be wrong advice for example let me let me share with you my own story i worked my butt off in school to get into india's number two ranked medical college 
okay so not only did i get good education i also wanted to get the best possible degree which is you know doctors probably you know they said doctor will never be hungry because people will always you know people always need a doctor they always need help they always they always falling sick they always need help in that area etc but when i was in med school around the same time two major things happened two major things happened first of all there were a lot of the private medical colleges opening in the city that i was studying which is pune a lot of private medical colleges opening and i belonged to delhi i had worked very hard to get a qualification seat you know given lots of entrance exams and finally got into india's number 2 ranked medical college on a merit seat where you kind of give the exam you get the rank <laughs> you show up okay and at the same time I saw that a lot of people from my school that I you know they, they never did well in studies and probably you know it was not for them everybody should not be good in study Pe- people should do different different things but even the people who are not good in studies they had not failed in competitive exams etc they all found their way into the same town which is Pune and they would just call me or you know reach out via letter or whatever saying hey I am I am also in Pune well, what are you doing I am in medical college well how the hell man you couldn't possibly get into medical college right there were a lot of these private medical college that were opening up where if you paid the right kind of money you know you would probably get a medical seat now i'm not saying anything is right or wrong about it if the country needs more doctors they should absolutely be more seats no question about it but what i realized was this market is slowly getting saturated and not for the right reasons what happens 10 years later when i'm there in the market and there is you know 100 times the supply of maybe qualified doctors that 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 are needed on top of that the government had just passed a law saying uh, you know that 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 people who pass out from an ayurvedic college or a homeopathic college or a allopathic college or any of these health sciences colleges will be treated at par for any job in any hospital and that in my mind was a big problem because all of them are very different disciplines homeopathy is a very different discipline ayurveda is a very dis- different discipline you know allopathy is a very different discipline instead of building more hospitals for each of these different disciplines so that there could be different so the indian consumer or the indian patient could have multiple angles with which to solve their problems they were bundling all these doctors to, you know into the same health sciences arena and everybody could compete for the same job regardless of whether they had the right training for it or not that in my mind was a big problem it was a big freaking problem and i looked forward 20 years and i said man the demand supply situation is going to be all screwed up yeah now at this point if you call me selfish saying hey man you're not thinking about you know the what the government is thinking maybe they have a vision uh, but you're only thinking about yourself you would be right absolutely i cannot help society first i cannot help myself <laughs> yeah and over the years lots of people have called me selfish and i absolutely don't mind that now fast forward i had to take a decision and that decision involved risk okay and the decision would be how can i get up on the food chain so that i don't fall into the segment where i am under the ravages of the demand supply mismatch where i am rolled under the ravages of the demand supply mismatch funnily enough nobody in my friend circle nobody in my family circle and nobody in my academic circle this is the medical college where i was studying which include my friends my professors many of my seniors who had probably passed out from the same college and were now teaching us as professors none of these people were fit to give me advice because the advice involved something outside of the current realm of knowledge that i was immersed in so guess what i had to end up listening to somebody i had never met before who could understand my problems and not only that they had gone through the same uh, you know they had gone through the same situation in their own life and they had made certain changes which gave them a much better with they put them and their family at a much safer financial position okay so at this point when i could see when i could trust my instinct and i could see that the demand supply situation would be all you know all wonky a few years later when i would be in the midst of my profession i listened to a stranger and they understood exactly what i was trying to say they could and they could relate from their own life they gave me instances saying okay this is exactly what happened in my life and then they asked me a question okay then they asked me a question they asked me two questions the first question was what would make you believe that this can happen with you why would you be so sure that this will or will not happen with you you know you the demand supply situation will be all wrong for you and i said i don't know i just feel it and they said well would you would you agree that history repeats i said yes history repeats i i agree with it so if i told you an instance from history where this has happened before would you be sure that this will happen in the future i said yes if, if this has happened in history i'm sure this is going to happen in the future 
and then they said do you know of any other highly educated line of work which has become oversupplied so that those people are unable to find jobs and unable to build a decent future for themselves and I looked around and I said yes yes the year was 2004 and there was an oversupplied branch in the Indian economy of high, highly intellectual highly qualified people who were unable to get jobs and they were engineers and I said yes if we can get oversupplied with engineers there will be a time when even doctors will face this struggle so history repeats and the second question that they asked me that that my mentor actually would go on to become my mentor he asked me was let me ask you a rhetorical question you just have to think about it yourself instinct be honest with yourself and give me the answer I said yes if you did, don't make a change right now when do you think you'll be in a better position to make a change when do you think you'll be in a better position to make a change I said I don't know <laughs> I don't know and then he asked me when is the youngest you are ever going to be I said today man when is the youngest you are ever going to be when are you going to have the maximum time in your hands possible I said today because tomorrow I'll be older day after I'll be older maybe I'll you know I'll have a family wife kids whatever it'll be more difficult to take risks and make a change and then he said well once you have realized that you're at the wrong place at the wrong time and once you've realized that doing the same thing is not going to change the result for you because it's already happened in the past doing the same thing again and again ain't going to bring you a different result then it's time to do something which is time to take a risk okay now at this point in time I did not know this person very well of course he was influential in society he was very highly qualified himself he probably had a better degree than I had but apart from that there was nothing that you know I did not really know him from somewhere I did not have any common connections nothing like that which brings me to the second most important point in this video the biggest mistake that people make when they get good information okay the biggest mistake that most people make when they get good information is they go back this is your circle okay it's filled with all the useless information that's not helping you okay you meet somebody who's got new information you come over here and find this new information and then what do you do you go back and double check this information with all of those people who are giving you the incorrect information in the first place <laughs> you take good information and you go back and double check it with the information with, with the people who are giving you the incorrect information in the first place okay now I'm not saying that these are bad people okay in my case these were my friends these were my family these were my professors these were all the people that I had, you know I had worked very hard to surround myself with this was the creme de la creme of society cream of society but they did not have the right information and I knew that because things in the market were changing and I could not depend on any of them for my own family's financial future so if you're watching this video think to yourself who is in charge of your family's financial future and if it's you and squarely you and sometimes you can't depend on other people although you may be very close to them the one thing I did not do which has made me very very successful in life by my own standards I, I know there are people much more successful in life than me but it's helped me achieve things that no one would have thought possible at that time and the one thing was I did not take this good information and go back and check with the people who did not have this information in the first place <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so moral of the story <clears throat> always 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 trust a stranger okay especially for long-term things the financial market you know for financial future not taking a risk is the biggest risk the value of money is falling every single day which means you know the value of a home loan today is like six percent interest car loan seven percent interest you put your money in a bank it gives you two or three percent interest dollars are being printed and pumped into the economy by the u.s treasury so the value of the existing money is going on falling which is why prices are going on rising and some of the older things older methods and older routines are not working for you if you feel that then chances are that you may have to trust somebody you know who's a stranger if you think that that stranger gives you good information don't make the biggest mistake which is go back take that information to the people who are not having that information in the first place because then it will become a case of the blind leading the blind okay don't let the blind lead the blind especially when your own financial future is at stake fast forward a few years I acted upon that information that that stranger gave me I took him on as a mentor I submitted 200% to him 
and I figured out that I'm going to make need to make a change at some point. I still tested out my medical profession. I went and worked in a government hospital, but I realized the market was going exactly as I had predicted. There was an oversupply of doctors and you could not get a good salary even in a decent hospital especially when you're starting out and then there would be a long 20 year journey before you get specialization super specialization etc 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 and i said i don't want to be a part of this i don't want to be a part of this within the first two years of my medical practice i had actually quit practice and then my mentor said you need to learn sales and marketing because sales and marketing people are at the cutting edge of innovation and they are the ones who are able to uh, actually create great financial results for themselves that is a skill you need to learn so I went, I, I did sales, I did marketing, I worked as a corporate professional in sales and marketing. I did my own business in import-export consulting, which was sales and marketing. And in 2015, a company that I had built as part of a core team was sold in Silicon Valley for close to 500 crore rupees, which ended up bringing hundreds of crores of rupees in taxes and foreign exchange to India. Just about enough to probably build a small government hospital. So if you were thinking during this whole time, hey man, you know, greed is not good well greed is good because if you're greedy and if you're selfish you will be able to change your results and if you're able to change your results these results can be replicated into society if you cannot change your own results you know you can spend your whole life trying to serve people but it ain't gonna do you any good because somebody who can't help themselves cannot help society that's what i think now if you're resonating with this video and if you're watching this video anywhere outside of our private mastermind then the first logical step would be for you to head over to our private mastermind on Facebook, which is called startupfrat.club forward slash Facebook, startupfrat.club forward slash Facebook and be a part of our 20,000 plus hangout group on Facebook, where I share business specific information and trainings a few times a week. And you can also get to meet me live on certain live sessions and things like that. For the meantime, what I want you to do is comment below this video. What were, the, what were your biggest takeaways and what are the, if you have any questions, what are the questions going on in your mind? And I'll be sure to respond to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.